Hey everybody, I'm Luke Newman with Newman Films and welcome to the much anticipated Magic Lantern HDR workflow tutorial. I'm over here on the Oregon coast shooting a bunch of real estate videos and the HDR video has come in really handy in that the main selling points for these houses are the views of the ocean. Now, when I'm inside filming the living room or filming a bedroom or something like that, the outside view is usually quite a bit brighter than what I'm filming inside. So you have several options in exposing this properly, but the fastest way that I've found is using this Magic Lantern HDR function. I've gotten a lot of questions recently about my workflow, so I figured I'd just do a run through from installing Magic Lantern on your card all the way through to editing the shot so that if somebody wanted to try and do this sort of stuff, they wouldn't have to go searching YouTube for three different videos on how to install and how to do post-production. So I'm gonna cover all of that in this video. Let's start with installing Magic Lantern on your card. Okay, so this is gonna officially be the shortest tutorial you've ever seen, but um, all of the info that I'm gonna cover is already out there on um, sites and YouTube and stuff like that. But people kept asking for me to do a video, so I'm gonna just have all this information in one spot here on my channel. But again, like I said, there's not gonna really be anything new covered here. So quickly just jump right into downloading and installing Magic Lantern. They have a brand new website, magiclantern.fm. It's an easy website to navigate so to download just go to the download tab and what they basically have here is a current stable release version 2.3 just click on direct download and that's a five megabyte zip file open that up so what you want to do is format a SD card or a CF card and once that's formatted you're gonna copy all of these files onto that card and then delete all the firmware files except for the camera that you're using. So if you're using this for the 550D T2i, you delete everything but that firmware file. So basically on your SD card or your CF card, you only wanna have one .fir file. This is the Magic Lantern firmware file. So you only wanna have the one for your specific camera on there. Everything for installation is covered in this PDF, like I said, but I'm just gonna go over it in video form. So one thing you wanna make sure that you figure out is you wanna double check the camera firmware version you have installed. Apparently this is one of the spots that your camera can get screwed up. Uh, I've downloaded and installed Magic Lantern probably 20 times on three to four different cameras and never had an issue, but I've always paid special attention to this part. Um, checking which firmware version I currently have on my camera and making sure that it works with the Magic Lantern firmware. So if you go to the install PDF and you scroll down to get the right camera firmware version, uh, you can see here, let's say Canon 550D T2i, it says you need firmware 1.0.9. They also include links uh, where you can click on 1.0.9 and you can download that. If you do not have 1.0.9, make sure to install that on your camera or whatever uh, firmware they say to have on there before you put on Magic Lantern. So to install Magic Lantern, um, you have all of these files. You have the ML folder, and let's just say, since we're doing it on the T2i, the 550D, 109 FIR, then the auto exec bin and the user guide PDF. You have all that on a formatted SD card. So to install it, you put the SD card in your camera and you turn it to manual photo mode and then um, go into the menu and scroll over until you find camera firmware. Then you want to select that and it should ask you um, if you want to update your camera's firmware and it's recognizing the Magic Lantern firmware file that's on your SD card. So you want to go ahead and do that. Um, and it will basically install Magic Lantern. So once this is done installing, you press the delete button or the trash bin button to open up the Magic Lantern menu. The latest version on all cameras should have this HDR function. To access HDR, it's different on every camera, but it's usually the wheel, uh, the wheel or the arrows, the left and right arrows, but you go over to, um, you go over to the movie tab, and then there's an HDR video. 
Now what this HDR video basically is, is alternating ISO values frame by frame. So what you're choosing, your options for when you enable this HDR video function in Magic Lantern, you, are, you have two values to choose from, uh, a low ISO value and a high ISO value. And this is basically saying, um, I want my darker exposure to be ISO 200, and I want my brighter exposure to be ISO 3200. So as you can imagine, um, if your first exposure is ISO 200 and your second is ISO 400, you're not really benefiting much from this HDR. You're only gaining 200 ISO uh, in exposure there. So whenever I use it, I usually go um, ISO 200 and then ISO 1600 or 2000 or 3200 or something like that. So a low ISO value and then a high ISO value really gets you the most dynamic range out of this function. And since it's a little limited to start out with, I figure, you know, why not get the most out of it when I'm going to use it? So you can, um, I believe if you hit the zoom button, uh, you can go in and change the lower and the higher ISO value that um, you want. But once you have that set, so let's say ISO 200 and ISO 3200, once you have that set, we'll go back to live view. And this will, um, if you just wait a second, the live view should cycle back between a preview of the lower ISO value and the higher ISO value. So you can expose it accordingly. So, so I, you know, I usually just go off the highlights and um, if something's blown out like a sky or something like that, I'll make the image darker um, because usually what I find is I'm doing HDR to keep the highlights in check. Once you get your exposure figured out, you record a video and what you're left with is um, if you go back and you actually do playback and watch this, it's almost like a strobe light or something. It's just flashing light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And those are the different ISO values. It's ISO 200, ISO 3200, ISO 200, ISO 3200. And it's alternating um, those ISO values frame by frame. So really my, uh, my tip for doing this is that Motion, subject motion, really uh, has some problems with ghosting. And so that's why this is only useful, in my opinion, for certain shoots. Uh, and, and for me, the real estate videos were perfect because there's no subject motion at all. Everything's, you know, still, you know, you got the living room and the furniture, that stuff's all still. Um, so to really make it, uh, to make it pop, I decided to have as much camera movement as possible because if there's no subject movement and there's no camera movement, that might as well be a photograph. Like there's no point in even doing video at that point. So for these real estate videos of the coast, you know, exposing the outside and the view of the ocean was as important as showing the inside in the living room or something like that. Doing the HDR uh, and allowing me to do some dolly shots with HDR was really just the perfect combination to really hit the selling points that the owner was looking for for these houses. So that is just my tip is, is to get some camera movement because you can't really use subject movement with this HDR function. So whether, you know, for Bodhi, I used um, a motorized dolly track, uh, you know, and that was a nice speed for this HDR function because even if you do too fast a camera motion, you will get um, ghosting on your subject, which is like the furniture or something. If I were to do too fast of a dolly move, I would get ghosting. So it's all about getting movement in your shots, but not too quickly. You know, I just tend to go for the slower dolly moves, the more smooth dolly moves when I'm doing this and play it on the safe side so I don't get any ghosting. Now let's just hop over to uh, post-production and take a look at my workflow for getting these ready to edit. So again, we bring these files in and what we're left with is alternating ISO values, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. And again, I'm not doing anything new. This, this uh, workflow is on their site. They have links to everything. I'm not doing anything different here, but I'm simply just gonna show you where to find this stuff, links to find this stuff, and then just a quick walkthrough on how to do it. If you go to the Magic Lantern website and go to user guide and scroll down to movie and go to HDR video. And then my workflow is this first interframe script user friendly version. Go ahead and click on that and it will download this zip file. 
um, 13.9 megabytes, click on that zip file, and it's a number of different software programs, AVI Synth, AVI Synth plugins, Infuse, Scripts, Virtual Dub, Main CMD, blah, blah, blah. Unzip all this stuff on your desktop into a folder titled HDR Workflow. You might need to install some stuff. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I believe you need to install AVI Synth. Run this AVI Synth application, I believe, and that will install it. Uh, and I think that's the only thing you have to install. So this is really easy. What you do next is you take your HDR video file and you rename it RAW, capital R-A-W. Then you move it into this HDR workflow folder on your desktop, and then just simply launch this main Windows command. Launch that, and Virtual Dub will just start separating these files, the light, the dark, the light, the dark, and it's separating all these. If we go into this frames folder, we can see it's starting an image sequence the A frames are basically the dark exposure and the B frames are basically the light. And once it goes through and it does this for your entire shot, then it will close AVI Synth and launch a script that basically combines these A and B frames into a third C image sequence. And it'll do that again right there in the frames folder. So basically, I mean, you just rename the shot raw, capital R A W, move it into the HDR workflow uh, file, double click on the main Windows command and let it go. Um, when it's all said and done, AVI Synth will relaunch. You simply close out of it, go into frames. Uh, I usually delete, you know, all of the A and B image sequence frames, delete those. So what I'm left with is the combined C image sequence, uh, basically the HDR image sequence. And that's what you can bring into your editor. So that's basically it. I mean, I know I didn't cover anything new, but people kept asking just to see it all in one place. You know, it's, it's quite a bit of work um, just to get that, but Magic Lantern has other cool functions um, that make it worth installing, not just the HDR. So that's it. I hope you uh, got something from this, and I encourage you to give Magic Lantern a try. It has some really cool features. I'm Luke Newman with Newman Films. Thanks for watching.